And this is the global forecast for 2024. I'm going to run through it month by month because there's a number of trigger points over this coming year. But before that, let's look at the big picture. The big picture talks of 2025 and 2026 and the movement of all the outer planets from feminine into masculine signs. Pluto moving into Aquarius this year. Saturn and Neptune beginning to move into Aries next year in 2025 and permanently in 2026. Uranus moving into Gemini in 2026. Jupiter by that time will be in Leo in 2026. These, this has never happened before, ever. For the patterns that these planets are making with each other, it's never happened before in human history. This represents a time of the biggest time of concentrated change in, in, in our history. And it's a consciousness shift. And it's inevitable. 2024 is the acceleration, the continuing acceleration of the last few years in the build up towards 2025 and 2026. In that note, certain times over this coming year stand out. I will try, I, I, I won't be able to not mention certain countries. Because I'm in Britain, I choose not to speculate on British politics. I'm too involved, I can't be objective. I'm not going to be basic or crude, but honestly, British, British politics is representative of the world's politics. Nobody has confidence in any of our politicians anymore. The days of the what passes for the political processes around the world are coming to an end. It's time for a whole new way of representation. Based on something more like one person, one vote, proportional representation and the abolition of political parties. Just having elected representatives doing what their electorate wants them to do. That is what is coming. In January. January it stands out for two particular different things. You've got, in the second week of January, you've got Mars sextile Saturn and Mars trine Jupiter... And in the last few days of January, you've got Venus sextile Saturn and Venus trine Jupiter. And I have to draw some type of conclusion here that this is very good for romance and finance. And that a number of people, particularly those people born around the end of the first, around the end of February, towards the end of May, towards the end of um, August and towards the end of November, this is actually a good time for both financial and romantic situations. Sandwiched between these two is a, one of the most pivotal points of the year. This is critical. On the 20th of January, the Sun will conjunct Pluto at 29 degrees, 58, 59 minutes of Capricorn. The very, very final moments of Capricorn. Very shortly after that, less than an hour after this, the Sun will leave Capricorn and move into Aquarius on the 20th of January. And on the 21st of January, Pluto will move into Aquarius. This is a sudden, sudden pimple springing up. It's like a huge zit suddenly coming into existence. And I can't help but feel that this has tremendous implications for Russia. And it'll be really interesting to see what goes down around Russia and to a lesser extent Putin, the Ukrainian situation. I do think there's going to be a number of crescendos around the 20th and 21st, the 19th, 20th, 21st of January. And it could get very extreme for a very brief period of time. As we get into February, there's a couple of in really interesting points in February as well. Um, 
there's a eight day period in the middle of February over the 14th to the 22nd of February where both Venus, first of all, you've got Mars conjunct Pluto at the end of Capricorn, uh, at the start of Aquarius on the 14th of February. Then you've got Venus conjunct Pluto on the 17th of February. And then you've got Venus conjunct Mars on the 22nd of February. So Venus and Mars together on top of Pluto at the start of Aquarius over the third week of February, 14th to the 22nd. Um, this is going to impact on quite a few people's love lives. And it's going to have a global effect as well. But I think it's going to be more personal than global. And um, if that zero degrees, one degree area of Aquarius impacts anything in your personal chart, then that third week of February is a great time for, for um, romantic resolutions. Let's put it that way. At the end of February, on the 28th of February... You've got a one-time standalone aspect. The sun will conjunct Mercury on top of Saturn. For many people, the very end of February is a time of making decisions that are not based on emotion and feeling, but are based on yes, no, black, white. It's going to be impersonal, objective, detached, cold. Not negative, but effective and efficient. Late February... Critical time for big decisions for the world. March is relatively quiet. We can take breath. But then we get into April. Ah, my God, April. April 2024. Been waiting for this one a very long time. It's all concentrated around the second half of April, around the third week of April. Yes, sandwiched between two conjunctions from Mars. Mars will conjunct Saturn on the 10th of April, which is how likely to have a degree of surgical strike about it. And Mars will conjunct Neptune on the 29th of April, which will lead to lots of vague promises around environmental well-being and no substance. On the 20th of April, Jupiter is conjunct Uranus. On the 19th of April, Mars is sextile Jupiter, and on the 20th of April, Mars is sextile Uranus. But Jupiter conjunct Uranus at 2021 degrees of Taurus, on top of the sun position of both Palestine and Israel. It seems to me that the conflict in the Middle East is going to go through the roof at this time and reach a point of finality. And there will be resolution and permanent outcomes at this time. And it may actually surprise us all as to how it works out. I've been looking at this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction for a long time and thinking, oh my God, Middle East stuff, Middle East. But the more I've crunched the numbers for this, and I've realised that at the time of that, Mars is sextiling them both. So this is going to give the opportunity for an energetic way of dealing with, solution, with situations that could actually lead to a positive outcome. Fingers crossed. Nevertheless, 20th of April, trigger point. May is quite quiet. Wouldn't be surprised me if there's a British general election at that time. We have the Sun conjunct Uranus, the Sun conjunct Jupiter, Venus conjunct Uranus. And then on the 23rd of May, we have Venus conjunct Jupiter, both exactly sextile Neptune. And I just think that there's something about May which is offering a lot of fresh starts and new beginnings. And this continues into June by which time Jupiter has moved into Gemini. Um, over the start of June, in the first few days of June, we've got the Sun conjunct Venus and Mercury conjunct Jupiter trine Pluto at the same time. So the first three to four days of June seem to offer lots of fresh starts, new ideas and new beginnings. Mars will square Pluto on the 11th of June. That might be a little bit naughty and nasty. One or two subversive issues or elements creeping in. And on the 17th of June, both Venus and Mercury together 
cross from Gemini into Cancer, but just before they do, they both square Neptune. So I do expect in mid-June, with Mars square Pluto and Venus and Mercury together square Neptune, I do expect people trying to muddy the waters. And it seems that early June is going to offer lots of nice new options. And then mid-June, a few people are going to go, oh, we don't want to do that. Oh, this is bad. We want to keep our power. Let's muddy the waters. Let's make it confusing. July. Quiet-ish. We've got a Mars-Uranus conjunction around the 15th of July. On the 22nd and 23rd of July... We've got the Sun opposite Pluto and Mars trine Pluto. So again, there's an energy of breakthrough here. Sun sextile Mars, that's a lovely energy. Breakthrough around the 22nd, 23rd of July. Into August. Um, I suspect there's going to be a little bit of financial news. It's all condensed in August into a one-week period. We have Mars conjunct Jupiter on the 14th of August. Mars square Saturn on the 16th of August. Jupiter square, starting to square Saturn on the 19th of August. And then Venus square Jupiter and opposite Saturn on the 19th of August. And Venus square Mars on the 22nd of August. So you've got... A Mars-Jupiter conjunction, T-square, Mars-Jupiter at the bottom, T-square, Saturn in Pisces, Venus in Virgo. And I suggest this is going to lead to some type of financial overreaching and over undercutting. And it's likely to be a degree of global economic challenge difficulty and situations getting out of proportion it's going to be a white elephant it's going to be larger than life and over the top so beware the 14th to the 22nd of august it's going to be mountains made out of molehills into september it's a very neptunian month We've got mars square neptune on the 3rd of september Sun opposite Neptune on the 21st of September. Mercury opposite Neptune on the 25th of September. It's a quiet time. Not everything will be the way it's painted as being. And then at the very end of September and the start of October, there's a lovely grand trine in the sky for five days. Mars in Cancer, Venus in Scorpio, Saturn in Pisces. That's rather nice. So, the period of the 30th of September to the 4th of October is actually quite good for balance and harmony in terms of both romantic and financial situations. October, quiet. The run-up. November, supposed to be the American election. November, astrologically, is quiet. We've got um, Venus conjunct Jupiter on the 3rd of November. We've also got Mars opposite Neptune on the 3rd of November. So we start November with a lot of hype and spin, a lot of false promises, but then it's election time, so you might expect that. As you get into the end of November, there's a two-day period where things could get suddenly quite out of control for a couple of days. Over the 17th, 18th of November, Sun opposite Uranus and Mercury opposite Jupiter, lots of hype and spin, lots of over-exaggeration, lots of people trying to revolutionise or make a breakthrough. So I do suggest this is more likely to affect America than anywhere else. And then we get into December. Over the 4th to the 7th of December... The sun in the sky will be conjunct Mercury retrograde, both opposite Jupiter, followed on the 12th of December by Venus opposite Mars. But looking at the large scale, the long term, the big picture, it's pretty clear to me. Yes, there's, there's um, the Jupiter-Saturn square that's kicking in around August that will then continue through until March, April of 2025. And that does point to some type of long-term 
financial restructuring at a global economic level. But it does seem to me that the time from May onwards, astrologically, it seems much quieter than the first four months of the year. There are trigger points from May onwards. Um, I'm, I suppose I'm particularly looking at that time around financial challenges around the 14th to the 22nd of August. There's a lovely grand trine at the end of September, start of October. But it is the period from the start of January to the end of April that concerns me. And there are four specific times that jump out. There's the Sun-Pluto conjunction at 29.59 of Capricorn on the 20th of January. There's the Venus-Mars conjunction on top of Pluto over the 14th to the 22nd of February. There's the Sun conjunct Mercury and Saturn around the 28th of February, which is like a lot of people coming together and making sh pretty important yes-no black-white decisions. And then there's the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on the 20th of April. All of these are connected with the ongoing situations in the world, the environmental, the climate chaos that is happening, and it is happening. I'm not attributing blame or cause. I'm not saying that it's caused naturally or it's caused by humans, but it is happening. And that's only going to escalate. The Ukraine-Russian conflict, the conflict in the Middle East, the American elections, the British elections... And there's plenty of other things happening as well. But when I started doing all these videos and crunching the numbers a few days ago, I, I, my impression was, yeah, it's going to be a pretty weird start to the year. Now, at the end of it, it's pretty clear to me that once we're into the start of May, 80% of the challenges of 2024 are over. But I do think that January through to April is going to be very eventful. So, so gird your loins... And um, take things of a pinch of salt, tread lightly, surf what's going on, rise above it. Don't buy into the media spin. Don't buy into the horror, the terror that sells newspapers and keeps the banks and the governments in control. The business of the future is about personal growth and self-development at a psychological and consciousness level in a way that's never happened before. And, and what's really happening is that we are rising out of the morass of 2,000 years of conditioning into becoming much more autonomous, self-governed individuals. This is inevitable. And the first four months of 2024 is going to be a test of our resilience and determination to rise above I'm not going to say the BS word. I'm going to say the bovine scatology that is presented to us. Surf the first few months of this year. From May onwards, it gets a lot easier. Catch you later regularly over this next year. Bye now.